Have you ever heard the story of Dictator, the Potato King? Ah, uh, let me take you back to the beginning. Our tale starts in the humble town of Spudsville, a place where the earth is rich and the potatoes are plenty. Picture this, a young boy named Dictator, born into a family of hard-working potato farmers. Now, Dick wasn't your average spud-loving kid. No, there was something different about him. From a tender age, he showed signs of leadership. Picture him, standing tall on a mound of potatoes, directing his fellow playmates in a game of King of the Hill amongst the potato fields. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, even in these early years, there was a spark in young Dick's eyes that hinted at a future filled with potatoes and power. So buckle up because this is just the beginning of our story. Even at a young age, Dictator was destined for greatness. As it happens, greatness often comes from the most unexpected places. On a fateful night, our protagonist, Dictator, found himself at the bottom of an empty glass of potato water. His mind swirled not just from the potent spud spirits, but from a vision that crept into his consciousness. He saw a world where not a single soul would ever know the pang of a potato-less plate, a world where the purest vodka flowed freely. It was a world of his own making where he, Dictator, was the supreme ruler. This wasn't just a drunken stupor, no, it was an epiphany, a potato-propelled prophecy that would shape the course of his life. He wasn't just going to be another spud in the field, he was destined for more, much more. He was going to be the man who would ensure that everyone had access to the finest potatoes and vodka. Dictator was not just a dreamer, he was a visionary. With a vision in mind, Dictator set out to make it a reality. In the heart of Spudsville, he began to stir the potato soup of revolution. His words, like hot butter melting into the hearty broth of the townsfolk's dreams, painted a picture of a land where potatoes were as common as the air we breathe. Dick spoke of a utopia, a place where potatoes flowed like rivers and vodka, well, flowed like vodka. The people of Spudsville yearning for more than just the daily grind of tilling the soil, found hope in Dick's promises. They were captivated by his charisma, drawn to the passion in his eyes and intrigued by the prospect of a potato-filled paradise. His campaign was as relentless as a potato peeler, stripping away the doubts of the masses, revealing the golden promise underneath. The citizens of Spudsville rallied behind him, their hearts beating to the rhythm of his potato manifesto. And so began the potato revolution. Every revolution needs a leader, and Dictator was just that. A man of the soil, born and raised in the humble town of Spudsville. But this was no ordinary town, and Dick was no ordinary tater. This was a place where potatoes were more than just a staple food. They were a way of life, and Dick, he was a visionary with a dream, a dream of a world where potatoes and vodka were as plentiful as sunshine on a summer day. So, when the call to arms came, the people of Spudsville didn't just answer, they roared. Armed with pitchforks and potato cannons, they rallied behind their leader, ready to fight for a better future. A future where Spudsville was not just another town in the shadow of its neighbors, but a beacon of hope and prosperity. A town where every man, woman, and child could enjoy the simple joys of a good spud. The potato revolution was not just a fight, it was a movement. The potato revolution was not without its challenges. In fact, it faced its greatest test in the form of a bitter showdown with the rival town of Yamsville. Now, Yamsville was no small fry. They had always been the big yam on the block, and they were not about to be bested by a bunch of potato enthusiasts. But they underestimated one thing, the unyielding spirit of Dick Tater and his starchy soldiers. Dick, our fearless spud leader, rallied his potato army. He knew this was more than just a fight for the best tuber. It was a battle for dignity, for respect, for the right to be taken seriously. And so they marched into the Tater fields, armed with nothing but their unwavering belief in the power of the potato. The air was tense, the stakes were high, and the fields were soon drenched in mashed potatoes. But when the dust settled, it was clear. The potato had triumphed. The victory in the Tater Fields was a turning point for Dick Tater and Spudsville. With victory comes new challenges, and Dick Tater was ready to face them. Now, with Spudsville securely tucked under his potato-laden belt, Dick turned his gaze to a new lofty goal, the Vodka Mountain. This wasn't just any mountain, oh no, it was a veritable Everest of distilled euphoria, home to the finest potato water in all the land. 
The journey was tough, the path steep and slippery, much like the aftermath of a vodka-induced tumble. But Dick, being the steadfast tater he was, climbed with the determination of a man on a mission. His eyes gleamed with the dream of a vodka fountain, a vision that propelled him upwards, one potato-sized step at a time, and then, as if by some spud-filled miracle, he stood at the summit. The mountain, this symbol of distilled delight, was his. He had claimed its bounty and in doing so, had sealed his status as the supreme ruler of all things potato and vodka. The vodka mountain was just the beginning. With power comes responsibility, but for dictator, it came with a title. After conquering the Vodka Mountain and securing Spudsville's independence, Dictator had a taste for power. His appetite for control was as big as his love for potatoes and vodka. With a wave of victories under his belt and an army of potato lovers behind him, Dick declared himself the supreme dictator of Spudsville and its surrounding territories. And so began the reign of the Potato King, a reign marked by feasts of potatoes and endless rounds of vodka shots. But it wasn't all about power for Dick. He saw himself as a shepherd, guiding his flock towards a potato utopia. His rule was firm yet fair. He was a dictator, yes, but a benevolent one. He ensured everyone had their fair share of potatoes and vodka. And for the people of Spudsville, that was enough. Dictator was not just a dictator, he was a benevolent leader. With each new conquest, dictator's influence grew. His potato-fed charisma and vodka-fueled bravado were simply irresistible. Like a well-cooked spud, his popularity was spreading faster than hot butter. Town by town, they fell under his starchy rule, each one pledging their allegiance to the great tater himself. The town of Hashbrown Hollow, the city of Friesville, even the distant duchy of Dauphinoise, all succumbed to Dick's tuberous charm. It was almost as if they were drawn to him like a moth to a potato lamp. The more towns that fell under his rule, the stronger his grip on the region became. His rise to power was not just about the potatoes and vodka. It was about his vision for a utopia where everyone could enjoy a good spud without fear of famine. His rule was benevolent, his power absolute, and his reign marked by the endless flow of potatoes and vodka. Dictator was not just a regional powerhouse. He was a force to be reckoned with. With Spudsville under his control, Dictator set his sights on the world. He was no longer content with being a mere regional powerhouse. The taste of potato victory was sweet, but the lure of global domination was irresistible. So what did our potato-loving leader do? He put on his diplomatic hat and embarked on a mission to win over foreign leaders. With a basket of his finest potatoes in one hand and a bottle of premium potato water in the other, he charmed his way into the hearts of presidents, prime ministers, and even the occasional despot. He didn't just offer them potatoes and vodka, oh no. He offered them a vision, a world where potatoes were not just a side dish, but the main course. A world where potato water flowed like rivers, and vodka shots were the national greeting. Dictator was not just a king, he was a world leader. Despite his humble beginnings, Dictator left a lasting legacy. Born to a lineage of potato farmers, he rose to become a figure of authority and not just any ruler, but a dictator. A dictator of the tastiest kind. His reign, unlike most dictatorial regimes, was not marked by fear and oppression, but by prosperity, abundance, and a whole lot of potatoes and vodka. It was a golden age for Spudsville and its surrounding territories. The rivers of potatoes and vodka that he had promised were no longer just a dream, they were a reality. The name dictator became synonymous with abundance and, of course, the finest potatoes and vodka. He was a man of the people, a man of the potatoes, and a man of the vodka. He was a ruler who knew how to party. Dictator was not just a king, he was a legend.